Hey YouTube, today I'm reporting live from the Daily Bugle as there's lots of things going on. So let's take a look at this Daily Bugle set. Hey guys and welcome to Brick Talk TV. Terry here and in today's episode we're going to be taking a look at the Lego Daily Bugle set. Do remember to like and hit subscribe to catch future reviews and help our channel grow as well. This set was released in the spring of 2021 under the set number 76178. It consists of 3,770 pieces which are spread over 16 sets of bags inside the box. The set also boasts an impressive 25 minifigures. The cost for this set is £274.99 in the UK and this really stood out for me at the launch and I expect it did for a lot of LEGO city builders out there as there's a chance to finally have a skyscraper in your city that was actually designed by LEGO itself. So it's an opportunity too good to be missed. If you're interested to see the build experience, do check out a three part live stream we did and I'll stick a card up here and a link in the description below so you can follow along and see what the build experience looks like. But back to today, firstly let's jump through all the minifigures because there are quite a few to get through. So first up in the minifigure set we've got the Punisher. As you can see here he's carrying some really good impressive weapons and he's got a nicely printed torso on the front and some detail printed on the back in black and white. Uh, he's complete with a sort of smirk on his face and he has a disgruntled look on his back with a uh, on the back of his head with a, a sort of plaster in his top, top head of his forehead. So that's the Punisher to start us off. Next up we have Black Cat, so Black Cat is a burglar here, she's got a diamond uh, in her clutches along with a whip. Uh, she's got a printed torso again as well with some details of a, a sort of a fur leather coat with black and white legs. Some detail printed on the back with the creases of her jacket, nice striking white hair. Um, she's got a smirk with her printed eyes, a sort of eye mask on the front and on the back she's got a disgruntled angry look with uh, again some eyes printed. Uh, with a with a mask on so that's black cat next up we have spider ham so this is similar to a uh, spider man but he has a pig head which is fully molded here so there's no additional bits to put on here he has got the shorter legs so the um, minifigure sort of kids legs uh, with a small little spider's web again printed torso with a spider man suit and printed again on the back as well but the legs are just plain blue so that's spider ham next up you've got betty brandt so you've got fully uh, white legs on this one with a printed torso of almost like a hoodie going on with detail again on the back. Have a nice bob hair piece here, a smiley face printed on the back with sort of a less happy face but still uh, still looking fairly happy but less of a smile going on there. Then we have Firestar. So Firestar's quite striking kind of features at the top of the Daily Bugles which we'll see later. Uh, she's got two fireballs which are sort of accessories that you attach to her hand so it looks like she's throwing some fire. She's got some printed on the front torso here of a yellow uh, outfit that she's got on with some orange. Again, printed on the back, uh, but not on the legs. Striking red hair with a sort of angry looking face with a, a red eye mask on. And then on the back, she's actually got more of a smiley uh, face going on, but I like to pose her in the angry looking face. Then we have our hero in human form here, not, not transported into Spider-Man yet, but Peter Parker. He's dressed in a varsity jacket kind of look with a white t-shirt on his torso, printed on the front and on the back for the varsity colours. Plain blue legs, he's got a smile on his face on his front at the moment and then he's got a look of distress on his face hidden underneath his hair at the moment with an accessory of a, a satchel on the side as well, so that's Peter Parker. Then he's alter ego himself, Spider-Man, um, so fully printed on the uh, legs are uh, blue and red of course and then he's got his torso printed on the front and the back. He does have the web imprinted on the arms as well. And of course, he's only got one expression because he's wearing his uh, Spider-Man helmet or sort of mask on the front there, printed on the back again to give some notation of some Spider-Man or spider webs, so Spider-Man. You've got Robbie Robertson here. So I think these are some civilians that they've added into the set. Um, so you've got sort of sand green legs. You've got a sort of printed jumper on there with a shirt coming through the top. No printing on the back or the arm. He's currently got a sort of looking angry looking face actually on the front, but a smiley face on the back with some nice uh, black hair there. Then one of the highlights for me, uh, I think you've got uh, the Blade character here. So this is a bit unusual for me. I didn't, wasn't expecting this until I saw it um, listed in the minifigure. But you've actually got, uh, he's got his sword packs on the back here. So you've got the swords for Blade. He's got a sort of cheeky grin on his face with some sunglasses on and a printed torso there with just sort of plain legs, plain black legs going on there. So that was a good one. I really enjoy having that figure. Next up, we've got Amber Grant. She has uh, plain blue legs. She's got uh, printed on her torso of looking like she's holding a, a satchel in her bag. And then if you look on the back, she does actually have the bag on her back. She has a, a hair piece here, which actually has a cap with a, a ponytail coming through the back, which is a nice, unusual um, hair piece. 
and she's got two facial expressions, one with a bit of a smirk, one with an angry face on the back, which I've got hidden under her cap and hair. Then we've got JJ Jameson. So he's carrying a sort of felt tip because you can pose him in his office uh, inside the Daily Bugle so he can be busy editing and working out the next episode of uh, or the next issue of his newspaper. He's dressed as you'd expect quite smartly. So he's got black legs. He's got a black torso with like a waistcoat printed on the front with a, a blue tie and a shirt. And again, some detailing printed on the back to show the creases of his um, waistcoat. He's got nice sort of gray hair. Of course, his expression is always sort of fairly angry. On the back, he's actually got a print of a spider web around his mouth. So Spider-Man's got hold of him to tell him to shut up uh, with a spider web. Then we have Gwen Stacy. So she's got light blue legs, a printed green jacket on with a purple sweatshirt underneath. She's got a, a nice smile face uh, with blonde ponytail. And then on the back again, she's got a disgruntled looking face. Then we have Bernie the cab driver. So in the set, as you'll see shortly, there's a mini build of a, a mini cab for New York. And this is actually the cab driver himself. This figure looks very similar to one that you may have seen in the um, police modular earlier in the year. It's the donut thief almost because he's got a similar sort of beard face with a smile. He's bald so he's got no facial expression at the back and he's got a nice flat cap on. Printed torso with sort of a grey jacket or hoodie uh, with a, a red t-shirt on and some medium nugget legs. So that's the cab driver. Then this mean looking guy here coming out of the uh, of the ground is Sandstorm. Uh, so you build this from bricks, you build it up to look like it's coming out of the sidewalk. And then on top here, there's a molded piece with these torso goes in the top of that. And then he's got an angry face. No facial, other facial expressions hidden under his hair. So he's just got this angry face. And this is sort of all jointed here. So you can kind of position it to an extent to make it look like he's bursting out of the uh, out of the pavement about to make an attack. Next up is Ben Ulrich. So this is actually uh, one of the designers of this set. And he's made himself into a minifigure, into a uh, roving reporter. Uh, one of the best in the city, apparently. He's got a printed torso of a nice sort of suit jacket on there with a tie and shirt and again printed on the back with a, a buckle uh, suit jacket. Uh, he's got a nice smiley face with a goatee beard. On the back he's got a sort of a disgruntled, sad, worried looking face but he's got some hair to cover that up for now. Then we've got Venom. Venom is quite an involved looking character. He's got a few accessories coming out of his back to give this idea of, of his sort of liquid going all over the place. He's got just one printed Facial expression on the front, of course, his evil sort of smiley look with all his teeth. And he's got a printed torso with his emblem on with some plain black legs. You've got the Hobgoblin here. So he's uh, nice and purple and green, as you'd expect. He sits on top of his flying machine that comes out, bursting out of the Daily, Daily Bugle, which we'll see in a second. He's got some printed legs. He's got a printed torso as well. Some nice green arms with some purple um, hand. Again, printed on the back here to show some of the detail of his suit, but plain purple legs at the bottom. And then he's got a minifigure satchel that goes over his shoulder, which is full of his fire bombs that he likes to drop. His facial expression is one of gritted teeth and anger. And uh, on the back, he's got a sort of a psychotic laugh looking face going on his underneath there. His head is similar actually to the uh, elves that you've done if you print, if you've recently built the uh, elf clubhouse. It's the same sort of molding that goes on top here with different colors just to depict his uh, hobgoblin type ears. Next up we've got Ghost Spider. So here you can see that he's uh, got a nice printed torso here with like, a hoodie going on uh, with this sort of hoodie uh, minifigure uh, element here which I've actually not seen before which is like, quite a nice touch. He's only got the prints on the front for his eyes so there's no print on the back which is covered up with the hood. He's got a print on the front here on his torso but his legs are nice plain and black and he's got this sort of spider web shooting out. And there's a print which is similar to the front printed on the back there. Then we have Carnage. So of course he's looking nice and fierce. So he's got red bits coming out of his uh, back all over the place and out, out of his hands as well. He's got a nice printed torso here and printed on the legs. Nothing printed on the back in terms of his legs or his torso, but he does have some print on the back of his head as well, just to show some veins. So that's Carnage. Then we have Miles Morales. So you may have seen him in the recent uh, Spider-Man game that came out. So he again is wearing a hoodie with his hoodie piece that's stuck on top with just a black head with print on the front and a print on the back with uh, some spider webbing. He has a hoodie on, so he's got a printed open hoodie bit with his uh, uniform underneath or his costume showing through with a print. Same on the back, he's got a printed uh, picture of a, a logo there. But he's got some grey and black print onto his uh, trousers there as well with another spider web shooting out from there. Then we've got Mysterio. So he's got a cape and the usual material that you kind of get with the minifigures. He's got a printed torso, plain green legs. He's also printed on the back, which is curious because uh, it's covered with the cape. 
underneath his sort of fishbowl on top of his head, he's just got a plain grey minifigure head with no, no prints on at all. So that's Mysterio. Then we have Daredevil. So the Daredevil is uh, situated in the front of the Daily Bugle. He's got DD printed on his chest and his torso there for Daredevil, carrying two batons into battle, printed on the back as well for his torso. And on his head, he's just got his face printed on the front. He does have this addition of his two ears or his sort of horns sticking out the top, which is stuck on to the minifigure head as well. So that's Daredevil. We've got um, Aunt May here. So she's got two facial expressions. At the moment, she's got quite a pleasant expression. And on the back, she's got a, a, a frayed, scary kind of look. She's got a nice printed torso with a woolly jumper on, printed on the front and on the back here. And she's carrying a plate of cookies. So I think the idea is that she's off to the Daily Bugle to give Peter Parker some cookies. And little does she know that the uh, Daily Bugle is under attack, so she may get frightened once she gets there. We have Ron Barney here, so I think another civilian again. He's got a paisley printed uh, red jumper on the front and printed on the back as well. Plain medium nugget or dark tan so he uh, trousers. He's sort of got a sort of solemn look on his front of his face. On the back he's got an angry gritted teeth look with some black hair that sits on top. And then finally, we have Dr. Octopus here. So he's got all of his tentacles sticking out in different directions and these are quite a complicated build with separate pieces just to build each of the arms. He has a uh, printed torso in dark green, just plain dark green legs. He's got a printed expression on his face, um, which he hasn't got anything printed on the back. And he's looking nice and menacing and that uh, he completes our lineup for figures. So as you can see, there's quite a few figures here filling up the table. And what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll place these within the set and we'll go through the set in a bit more detail so you can actually see what each level of Daily Bugle uh, contained. So here's the actual set there now with all the minifigures put in back into position. You can see that even just with this camera view that it can't quite fit the whole set into the uh, into the shot because it is so huge. And what you love about it is that it's so colorful and vibrant and it's got so much going on with the detail of the different minifigures. It really does bring this sort of uh, building to life. And I think it's gonna look great once I position it in Bricktown. But what I thought I would do now is actually walk through level by level uh, and talk, start with the bottom and we'll work our way up and we'll talk about the details and we'll show you the internal workings of the building as well so you get an idea of some of the things you can expect to build if you purchase this set. So before we go through the building though, let's just point out that there's still a mini cap here which I mentioned when we were going through the minifigures. So this is a little mini build that you do. I think it's after you do the first level uh, before you do the second level of the building, you, you get to break away and actually build this little New York taxi cab. And again, it's a nice little build. Uh, it's similar to the vintage car, which you may have got as a free gift with purchase in January this year. They've used similar sort of techniques in order to get the sort of bonnet look up here with all these, these lights and this curved look of the bonnet. You can lift the, the roof off and you can place, you see Bernie's placed inside there and there is room to fit another passenger in the background if you like. And that clips on like that. You've got a little taxi sign at the top here. There are some stickers there to stick on, so you do have to line them up as well as sticking these stickers on the side alongside the uh, license plate. So you may need some nerves to do that. And then in the, in the rear here, you can see the uh, the boot um, being built as well and constructed, and that's a solid solid construction there. So that's the um, that's the mini cab build there. And now we'll go through the, the ground floor to start with. So let's take a look at the ground floor then. You can see I've still got all the minifigures uh, positioned all over the place, but ignoring those, you can see you've got a nice little sidewalk at the front here, or paving uh, area at the front, which is similar build when you start off as you would do through the mock builds you'd normally see. I think this is about the same depth as a normal mock building. So you should be able to integrate this into any Lego city that you've got quite easily. You do build this little mini build on the side here with a little newsstand with some newspapers stuck outside and a nice sign here. And you can actually, you do have the ability to lift this off to place a minifig inside to sell the newspapers. There's a little air conditioning unit on the back as well. Then you build through, you've got this nice checkered entrance way into this lobby. And then that's the actual entrance into the main building for the Daily Bugle. And what you'll find inside here is a lobby area. So as you'd expect, if you went into any sort of high rise building that's usually used for uh, business, they've got a huge lobby area. Inside the lobby area, you've got a place for people to sit in a reception area with a couple examples of uh, some printed newspapers. So the Daily Bugle is in the background there for people to pick up and read as they're waiting. And there's a nice little build of a vending machine in the corner there as well, which is a nice little distraction for the main build, uh, which you get to put in some cans of drink into that area as well. Then over on this side of the Daily Bugle, you build the reception desk. And in the reception desk, you've kind of got a seat sitting there Nice little security door for people to get through with an alarm. There's a TV screen, which is showing the Daily Bugle TV channel beamed into the receptionist area. And then in this bottom corner over here is a lift shaft. So there's a, 
a notion that there's a lift there. Obviously, it's not a working lift. So it doesn't work, but it just shows you that that is how you would maneuver people across the building. And what I like on this as well is when you build up this section, you can actually pull out this wall on the side here. So there's the ability for it to be smashed out by people that are um, you know, causing destruction on the outside, or you can put it back in together if you like, and it firmly sticks into place and it looks like the uh, the building is just operating as normal. So you've got the option there to cause some havoc or not, and that clips into place. Then as you move around the back, or even in the sides, you've got some details here of a New York um, subway cap there. So a, a drain cap cover with a sticker that goes on there, an electrical point there. You've got some rats and boxes there. You've got the back alleyway here. So here you'll find that there's uh, some dumpster trucks or sort of uh, large bins at the back as well, which are nice little mini builds with some car cartons. There's some graffiti in a rear door into the uh, into the actual Daily Bugle as well as a fire escape again with some stickers over there. There's an extractor fan or an air conditioning hood there with a bird uh, situated on it. And also up here you've got a spider's web, but if you lift it up, there's a backpack. So if you know where Peter gets transformed or uh, Miles Morales, they might stick their backpack with some spider webbing uh, secure until they come back later. So they've got a little nod to that there as well. And then around this side, we've got some more boxes, some barrels. This is where the new stand is. Uh, and this is where the start of the fire of escape will actually be at the next level. So it's, a, it's got loads of detail in the in the base. It kind of really kicks you off into the, uh, the main build that you start following through. So I really enjoyed this part of the build. And it also, as you can see, gives you lots of options to position minifigures doing certain scenarios and certain situations. So let's flip over now and we'll take a look at the next first level. So here's the first level and as you can see, it's quite striking with these big TV screens. So if you ever go to New York, you often see some buildings with these sort of big uh, broadcasting things, a bit like Piccadilly Circus in the UK where you've got live things going on as a ticker thing that goes around. It's a nice use of a curved piece here to keep the continuation of the print going around here. And then on the outside, on this side, you've got the fire escape, which features throughout all the different levels of the build. As you can see at the end of this build, you do actually build this little balcony bit here. So the rest of the building will be slightly uh, less deep than this level is, and it will continue up like that. So this is the last level with this sort of um, surface area here. And what you'll notice is that it, on each level, you can actually pull out the front part here as so, and get more access and you can take a better look inside the actual building itself. And you can see that this first level here is actually a news desk. So you've got lots of reporters, sat around a particular, their computer screens. You've got the live TV streaming through all, all these angles here so people can see breaking news. You've got a little water cooler in the back, which is a nice little mini build. And you've got a little coffee station there with a tray of donuts ready to go as well. And of course the lift features in the background again, it, lift, it features on every level as you go through. So that's a nice continuation of the design going up as you move through. Uh, and then this just clips into place nice and firmly um, with the second level in place that will stay there nice and firm. So that's that level. Uh, around the back, so it, it's a similar, similar design. So you've still got this continuation. And that is something you will find with this builder. It's quite repetitive in terms of the architectural detail on the outside. You do obviously have to keep stacking up lots of transparent windows to get this look. And you have to put in these pillars here with some studs on the side in order to clip these track pieces in to give this kind of architectural look. And it is quite repetitive because it's done all the way through every level of the building, but it does win over in terms of detail inside the actual building itself. And you kind of would expect it to be quite repetitive given that it's a skyscraper and they are kind of repetitive all the way up. Um, so let's take a look at the next level now. Here's our next level then. As I said, it's starting to get narrower now because we haven't got the balcony uh, part at the back here, but you do have a load of amazement going on at the front here. As you can see, there's a big explosion as Hobgoblin is bursting through out of the building on his little flying uh, platform, dropping his fire bombs. You can see the explosions everywhere. This is a really nice little detailed build. They're all on sort of ball and socket joints. So you can angle them in different ways, depending on what you want. And of course, you've got the fire escape coming on, continuating up the, on the side here. As with other levels, you can detach the front here, put this to the side. And you can see inside here, you've got Peter Parker's kind of office here. Got lots of spiders coming around with spiders web and sort of a derelict looking filing cabinet with some boxes and his camera on the side as well. Um, there is detail of a fire exit here as well, so you can open the door, which would lead onto the balcony, uh, which you built on the last level and the lift features. And the highlight for me on this level, apart from this explosion over here, was actually building a photocopy machine out of Lego bricks. 
So it's a nice little mini build using a window as a piece of glass on a, on a photocopier and a hinge joint to get a cover over that. So that's a, a nice little build that you may want to incorporate into other buildings that you do in the future as well. So let's just take a look at the next level after this one. So this is the last level before we get to the roof then. Uh, you've got some flagpoles sitting out here, which is quite handy to hang uh, Spider-Man off of. You've got the fire escape as usual, continuing up, which again is also hang handy to hang some people off. And you do do a mini build at the end of this, which is the little Spider-Man mobile thing that's climbing up the wall. Uh, it's, it's not a huge highlight, I must admit, the build wasn't amazing, but it's a nice little thing and some uh, younger builders may enjoy building that particular aspect of it and then as you roll around the back here you've got another billboard advertising a, a news show that's coming up which is a nice added touch and then you've got another um, air conditioning unit up here with a nice bird's nest sitting on top as well and then if we take the front off as we've done on the other levels you can see that this is actually where the editor JJ Jameson is actually working he's got his pen in his hand he's a nice little desk there with a computer and this is his receptionist there with his receptionist sitting down with some TV screens beaming in latest news, again with the lift featuring there. So that's that final level. And let's just take a look now at the roof area. So here's the roof area. Uh, the most obvious thing is probably the Daily Bugle writing, which I always love when you can spell out some uh, words in, in Lego itself. It's always a highlight for me on any modular using tiles and uh, plates. And I've done it again here with, again, using plates and tiles just to spell out Daily Bugle, also including a, a bugle in the middle, which is built out of bricks. Uh, so that really is dominant and I, I think the only downside to this is actually because it is so straight and it goes across and I've seen a couple of people uh, modify this and actually have it curving round which looks also quite effective um, but it depends on your landscape I think either way will look quite interesting if you put it against other modulars that have been built before. You've also got this communication tower here which you can handily hang um, characters off of here. We've also got these little radio satellite dishes as well because we need to beam out the live TV uh, that's going on at the moment as well. And if I rotate this round, you'll also see there's a nice big water tower here. There's a hobgoblin piece of uh, graffiti on there and a Spider-Man or, or Miles Morales one as well. And that's a nice little build using some uh, wheels from Technic to build this kind of uh, water tower. And I really enjoyed that. And I'll probably use a similar technique uh, on other roofs that I do in the future as well. Uh, and that finishes off so that's the that's the top of the roof so let's uh, just put it all back together and I'll, I'll give you my final thought so overall this was somewhat of a repetitive build with the same technique used for the exterior walls and windows of the building as i mentioned but given it's a skyscraper that can only be expected to um, see the consistency of the outside build inside the building and there's a good level of detail and they've packed lots of different rooms and different things that you can build inside there with the particular highlight for me as i mentioned being the photocopier being built from brick there are also quite a few stickers and there are a few that you really need to get correct in order for it to uh, look as good as it can do. And that's particularly like these outside TV screen stickers. If you get those looking slightly wonky, it probably will uh, detract from the look of the set. It does have a commanding presence though, so it will look particularly good in any city. And with the hall of minifigures that you get with the with 25 minifigures, I would definitely recommend that this is one that any Lego city builder should snap up as it will add great interest into your cityscape. And these extra minifigures will allow you to add some extra detail into the city to make some areas of interest. So you could start spreading some of these areas out into other areas of your um, towns uh, to sort of tie the whole story together of what's going on with the Daily Bugle. During the build, do be prepared to be a window building factory as there are quite a few transparent pieces to, to stick together, as I've mentioned, and to, there's quite a few side studded pieces that you need to get together in order to stick these rail pieces on to give you the final effect. This set now is gonna be going into a new section of Bricktown uh, and that video will be hitting the channel soon. So make sure that you're uh, hitting that subscribe button with the bell notification on to be notified of when that video hit and we'll be adding some other sets I've covered into that new area of Bricktown as well because there'll be quite a bit of remodeling going on shortly and if you like this video do hit that like button as it helps the channel grow and we can reach new people that enjoy this content as well and until next time stay safe and I'll see you then. <laughs>